This is a video to show how to mat and frame artwork. You can see that uh, I'm putting plexiglass over this framed piece. You can also buy uh, cut glass from a, a glass cutter, but it's easy to pick up plexiglass from a home goods store like Home Depot or Lowe's. Here you can see I'm marking it and measuring it. Uh, you then want to clamp a metal straight edge onto it. Uh, you don't need to draw a line all the way across. You can just have two points on there that uh, line up to make a straight line. Clamp it down. Make sure you're using the metal straight edge so that you're not going to gouge into anything with uh, a wood straight edge. And you're also going to cut it many more times and make sure you're going all the length of it so that you don't get any strange broken corners. You'll snap it off. There's a pl plastic uh, film that goes across the outside and just take a razor blade or an extra mat cutting knife to uh, take the piece off from there. Once you've got it cut, you're going to want to check it one more time, uh, putting it into your picture frame to make sure that it fits uh, snugly in there and uh, isn't too loose or too big to go in there. Here I'm double checking one more time the dimensions of the frame to make sure that I, I cut both the backing board and the actual cover-up mat board the right size. I'll use the straight edge cutter for these. You can vary the depth of how you cut with that. You just change out what the blade is. Usually I tend to use a foam core as the backing because it's more rigid and won't warp with any kind of moisture over time and that requires a, a deeper cut with a, a blade um, and then uh, you can use a, a shorter blade on there for the regular mat board. Here I'm measuring the work to make sure I know exactly what I want the window size to be. You're going to measure for what the width of each of those sides are. Traditionally the top and the sides are the same size and the bottom is slightly larger, a half inch to an inch larger. Um, I write those down on the outside because it helps me remember what the top is because sometimes you can get confused after you have it cut. Um, and then uh, you want at least two to two and a half inches all the way around. These are probably closer to four or five inches. You do want to draw the lines and go past the ends of the rectangle that you're going to be making because that will be a guide when you're actually cutting it on the mat cutter. You'll notice that there's a piece of an extra piece of mat board down. You always need to have that when you're cutting um, because it gives you a cleaner cut and not a very ragged cut. There is a ruler on the top uh, of this that will help you uh, cut at the right angle. Th this line here that I just showed was to, um, to show you where you start and stop uh, your cut um, so that you don't overcut the ends. Here I'm adjusting that little rule up at the top. You'll push the board up against that and then of course it does the perpendicular uh, side on the, on the other side there and then you use this beveled mat cutter. Um, you push that button that I've first pushed down to uh, make sure that you're not going to move the cutter when when you begin to move. There I've taken an extra blade to cut through the the corners all the way. Usually you kind of stop just short and that way you won't overcut the corners and you'll get a nice perfect cut. Now I'm putting the mat board onto the backing board. I've cut a gummed linen tape. Um, I make some teas with this actually. Um, it's you You wet the glue that's on the back of the tape and put it across uh, both the the tops of the boards on the interior and then on the backing board I put a piece going across the other direction just to hold those in place even even better and make sure that it doesn't shift. And then you kind of square it up and make sure that it is perfectly square. When you start to put the work in there you need to put something through the window once it's uh, perfectly aligned so that it doesn't move when you start to tape it down. Never tape the artwork to the actual matting board, the front piece. You're going to tape it onto the back. Here's some more of the linen tape. I'm only going maybe a quarter to a half inch. I'm going to put it face up, the glue facing up, and that's getting glued down to the back of the sheet of paper, uh, but it's dry across the top. Here I flip it back down to make sure that it's still uh, squared up one, one last chance, and then I take another piece and put this T 
across so you've got glue to glue but that glue is also taping it down to the backing board and then it's all set to go and, and dry make sure that it's clean before you and there's no particles on it before you put your glass or plexiglass do not use any kind of glass cleaner on plexiglass it will dull it and kind of scratch it um, but it comes to you pretty clean anyway it's got film on both sides you'll peel that off first but then it's got a lot of static with it so you want to use just a water dampened very lightly dampened cloth to wipe any lint or uh, particles off of that place it in there wipe it off on the inside one more time place it with the uh, the taped side down uh, toward the top and push it in there check to make sure that there isn't anything inside of it um, if there is then you'll have to take it back out and do this all again uh, and then you're going to need to uh, affix it i usually use a point driver that's what this little tool is you can do the same thing using glazers points which they use for window uh, making to, to put the glass in windows these are just uh, wire brads that are being used um, but you'll put those all the way around the inside and hold the piece up against the glass or plexiglass uh, then you'll need to put a backing paper on it. Um, this keeps actually bugs and other things out of the the, the work later on, so it is a, a thing that's kind of essential even though a lot of people don't do it. I cut it a little less than the size of the frame, um, and then it can get glued down either using like a, a double stick tape or I use just a white glue, uh, kind of doing one side at a time. Um, you can also do it slightly larger than the frame size and then trim it off later on but what i'll do is glue one side then go most of the way down these other two sides that's a bone folder that white tool that i'm using you can use your fingernail just to press it down as well uh, then you'll have a flap that's left with part of the two sides and then the other end and you finish that off trying to make it as tight and flat as possible across that space Next, you'll be measuring in from the top to put the hanger across there. Um, here I'm using a, a slightly smaller than what the screw is going to be a pilot hole to go to drill that in there. I use D-shaped hangers um, and not the sawtooth hangers. Um, it, it, you just tend to not be able to get a picture to stay quite level when you use those. So you'll screw that into each side and then you'll get your piece of wire and cut that to size twist it on one end pull it very tight on the other end and then twist it again and then the piece is finished and ready to hang